issues. This morning we are battling the bulge while so many residents in the DMV are getting healthy and they're working out and they're sweating and they're dropping pounds more than ever. Others are still struggling to prevent disease and reverse the effects of unhealthy lifestyles. Our guests this morning are here to help. Dr. Patricia Davidson is cardiologist at MedStar Washington Hospital Center. Reverend Dr. Gertie Hurley is founder and executive director of the group Taking Effective Action. And Reverend Dr. Michael Paul is senior pastor of New Beginnings Community Church in Bowie, Maryland. Welcome all of you. Welcome back, we should say. Mm -hmm. Reverend Hurley, uh, you declared September 26th, Celebration of Life Wellness Day 2015. How do you plan to celebrate that day? Well, we're going to have the famous Dr. Davidson there um, giving uh, good advice about how to live a healthy life. We'll also um, have Dr. Rodney Ellis there, who will be, this time we decided to break break it up so that the men had their own private session, because sometimes men won't come to things because they don't want women to be around to hear some of the things they ask about. We open it up to the youth 12 and over, and we're going to have all kinds of uh, activities, we games, uh, food demonstrations. Um, Dr. Renee Bovell will be there and doing IV um, screening mm -hmm. and um, blood pressure screenings and we'll have a cooking demonstration and it's going to be an enjoyable day. Sounds like a, a fair and it sounds like a lot of fun. It's but more than a fair. It's more than a fair. Mm -hmm. it's, it's where they're going to be empowered with some, some of their knowledge when they leave. We give them a pre-test before they start and a post-test afterwards to see how they fare. Uh, Dr. Davidson, statistics show Maryland has the 29th highest adult obesity rate in the nation. Is Maryland losing Battle of the Bulge? Probably they're losing, but I think nationally we're seeing a, a trend in, in childhood obesity decreasing, partly due to um, our first lady's effort to make that um, into a major issue. And she's been there, the president has been successful. Although many organizations have tried, but she's the first person who the food industry has actually been brought down to their knees to feel guilty. Um, <laughs> and so she's the only person who can do that. But but it's it's um, we're losing somewhat um, in many in many different areas. Uh, we still have a, a, a close to seventy percent obesity rate among African American women and Mexican American women. So we still are losing. Um, we still see a trend where food is, is a big issue, where, where, where poor food, bad food, um, and, and um, calorie-dense food that's not healthy um, is still being heavily um, marketed in our communities. And so that's probably the reason why, because Prince George's County will have less healthy food stores, and we still have an awful lot of fast food restaurants. So, so people have not gotten away from that need. And people still feel that, that this is punishment, when they can't go in to those fast food restaurants. Um, and we have to get people to the point where food is considered a gift, and it can keep you alive, or it can kill you, and stay away from the ones that can kill you. I'm sorry, punishment? People consider this to be punishment if, if they have to give up. Fast food. Their fast food. Yes, they consider it punishment. And, um, and, so it's, it, and basically, they're saying that, that this is more important than their life. Um, and sometimes you have to put it in those terms and they stop and think about it, but people do feel, and it's just like an addiction. And food is made to be addicted. Um, there's something called the bliss point, where, where food, the food industry actually tests with, with subjects, um, different, um, different recipes, and then the one where all the, all the um, participants say this is the best, that's the one that they produce, so it's the bliss point, the one where you can't eat just one. Mm -hmm. And so the food industry makes sure that their food is addicted. And people need to recognize that it's an addiction, just like alcohol or heroin or anything else, and they don't want to move on that. And they have the same withdrawal symptoms. If you have to give up some of that food, especially sugar, you will have the same withdrawal symptoms as, as somebody who's coming off a crack. You'll be irritable, hard to get along with. Um, you know, you'll be shaking, you'll, you'll be demanding, you'll be searching for something to eat in the refrigerator, going out in the middle of the night to find something. So the same as the crack addict would. So, so it may not be as extreme, but, it, but you get some of the same symptoms. So people need to acknowledge the fact that they are addicted to, uh, and they were made to be addicted by the food industry, and that they have to then fight. And that's one of the reasons why working in churches is good, because at least um, we hope that, that those in the church 
will have another way to help self-discipline themselves. Reverend Hall, your church is located in Prince George's County, uh, where more than 60% of deaths mm -hmm. are due to chronic disease. Yes. And nearly 70% of adults are obese or overweight. What What is your church doing to, to address those numbers? Well, we're committed to this uh, battle of the bulge movement. And we're doing it as a matter of uh, change in lifestyle, um, not just for a season. And what we've been doing is we've been offering the Battle of the Bulge classes. On Tuesdays, we've had uh, Battle of the Bulge uh, Sundays. We have a family and friends Sunday every third Sunday, and we've been featuring Battle of the Bulge. We've had various speakers come to share about various health concerns. We've had Dr. Davidson come, Dr. Bell, uh, Dr. Ellis has been there, as Dr. Hill has said. And we're just basically committed to educating people. In other words, giving them the training and the information that they need and then we're interested and, uh, and focused on energizing them. In other words, bringing them to a place where they're ready to take effective action. And then after that, what we want to do is encourage them. In other words, to let them know that it's sustainable. It's sustainable and they should never give up, never give up, never give up. So we're committed to a healthy culture in our church. As a matter of fact, we've, um, we have a, a vision for this movement called New Beginnings where faith and fitness converge for the glory of God. Mm -hmm. All righty, we are battling the bulge here on the for this morning. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Fitness and faith. The faith and fitness converge. Okay, we're talking about uh, battling the bulge, and we are talking about celebration of life, which takes place in Prince George's County uh, on September 26th. Uh, Reverend Hurley, I want to pick up on a point that Reverend Hall just made about the convergence of faith and fitness. Um, the goal of your celebration is to help change people's unhealthy behavior, but doesn't that start with changing their attitudes and their beliefs? Yes, and we start off by telling them what to do and how to do it and why. And we give them a demonstration. And then we have some you know, say some empowering words to them and send them off so they feel all charged up they can do that. And you hope that charge lasts, Dr. Davidson. It doesn't. But <laughs> you talk about people being in denial. Talk about you know that that wall and then that it's really amounted for so many people. People people will not associate their lifestyle. So that's why when, we, when I do the lecture, I spend an awful lot of time trying to make people understand that ninety percent of the risk is they have control, and they don't want to admit to that. Because when you end up having certain diseases that, that are acquired by your lifestyle, you stay in denial. And, um, and so the way we eat causes us to have the hypertension, the obesity, the diabetes, and the clogged arteries that we have, and that's what most of us die from. And if we survive that, then, then the cancer, um, the, the way we eat has some role because obesity is associated with a higher risk of cancer, even though thin people can get cancer, but, but um, the higher the weight that we eat because fat cells are more susceptible to become cancer cells. And so when you, when you have people understand that from the very beginning when they're a child, the food we feed our children, and our activity level plays a significant role, and, and the whole process of clogged arteries or atherosclerosis begins in the first decade of life. And then does the food addiction also start uh, with, you know, very young? I mean, you see mothers who have babies and they've got bottles, you know, hanging out of their mouths, and the bottles are filled with juice. Yes. And soda. Yes. And, they, and you see children always have a bag of something in their hands, or some, or some kind of, you know, I call it junk food, but it's you know, chips or, or twists, orange twists. There's always something um, that I consider junk food, which is high salt, um, high refined carbohydrate, and high sugar in their hands, and, you, and they can't go shopping for a long period of time. And all of the stores have something within them where they can, they can eat. So, and, and it's usually not healthy food. It's just like a hot dog on a white, white um, bread bun, and all those things. So it's like we cannot go longer than 30 minutes to an hour without eating. And we just keep feeding our children all day long. And, um, and it's not healthy food that we're feeding them. And the food industry knows this, and they're, they're ready to have all this very inexpensive food so we can make an awful lot of money on it. So we have to get to the point where, where we understand that, that this, the food that we pick can either kill us or it can sustain us. And, that's what that, and you have to either honor your temple or you can destroy it. And that's where we hope that by working with the churches, they can at least take that extra step and, and understand it. Yes. And, and, and 
Jane Vernon Hall to come yes. back to fitness and uh, and faith. Uh, she talked about the relationship people have with their food. Yes. Uh, and, and talk about physical fitness. Are, are you seeing uh, more churches incorporate uh, physical fitness as part of their ministries or activities mm -hmm. and what they are encouraging members to get together to do? Uh, yes, I think we see uh, the groundswell of that going on in the Christian community in a variety of different ways. And at New Beginnings, what we're trying to do is again to put together a movement again uh, that's sustainable. In other words, we don't want people just to be committed for a season, just for a period of time, or just to lose a certain, num uh, certain number of pounds. We want healthy lifestyle changes. In other words, we're committed to giving them what they need to live longer and to live better. And so uh, we really see this as part of the fabric of the church. Uh, let me put it this way. We talk about in Christendom about putting God first. Well, if we're putting God first, we can't really be put, if we say we're going to put God first, we can't put him first really until we make our health a priority. We say God has plans for our lives, Jeremiah 29, 11. But then, but we can't fulfill that plan unless we have a healthy body. And the body tells us, um, the Bible tells us in uh, 1 Corinthians uh, 6, 19, it says, um, that our body is a temple of the Holy Spirit and we glorify God with our body. All these things don't come together and make um, the intended impact or have the intended impact without making health a priority, healthy lifestyle habits. First things first. First things first. Okay. Yes, if God is first, we need to make our health first. All righty. Uh, celebration of life coming up on September 26th. We'll talk more about that celebration and the Battle of the Bulge. Stay with us. Uh, heart disease and cardiovascular disease are the number one killer uh, of people of all races uh, in this country. And Reverend Hurley, you're going to really zero in on that uh, that issue at the uh, the celebration of life. Talk about your focus. Well, Dr. Davidson is going to talk about cardiovascular cardiovascular disease as well as Dr. Pettis. and uh, also the food demonstrations will be centered around hot, healthy foods. We're also giving away a cookbook uh, and a kit with everything else um, about heart healthy eating and cooking. So it's centered around the heart. Know your numbers. Control your portion. Get up in the room. And those are the things we do. We take time to rest, sleep, meditate, all those things. We have a meditation CD we're giving away as well. Mm -hmm. Dr. Uh, Davidson, many people probably don't think about their hearts when they're planning their meals. Um, I'm a fanatic about counting fat grams and cholesterol because I know my, my health history. Uh, the CDC has, a, has identified four common causes of chronic disease, uh, and one of them is, 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 uh, is poor nutrition. Uh, the other is lack of exercise. You say that it doesn't matter what the culture is. Heart disease is still the, the big mountain that we all have to, to kill because of a, our lifestyle in America. Correct. All Americans, all genders. And, um, and it is definitely the lifestyle because we, immigrants come here with lower rates and then when they stay too long enough. Uh, like for instance, in the Latino population, which is not homogeneous, Mexican Americans have the same risk factors that African Americans have, so their rates are higher compared to that, which takes the four years or humans and things like that. So that it's not a homogeneous population. So it's clearly how long you've been here and an adoption of the of American lifestyle. And, and it's, it's mostly the, the refined carbohydrates that we that we want the food to look better, cook faster, and all the nutrients are gone and we're eating straight sugar. So when you eat a bowl of white rice, you're eating a bowl of sugar. Um, when you eat your, um, your french fries, that's a bowl of sugar. When you have your white bread, that's a stick of sugar. And so these are the foods that people, when they come into this country, like they couldn't get that. They had to bake their bread. They had to do those kinds of things. And so now they're able to go get sliced white bread. And, they, and so they're, they're taking food that is not as healthy because it looks better and, and it tastes better too. And then they, at least they think it tastes better. And then they end up having foods that drive them towards diabetes and then they end up gaining the weight, especially weight around the belly. The belly fat is, is around the pancreas, which is where we get our, our cells to secrete the insulin. And, um, and that's where it's the most harmful. And um, so that you have to start measuring your waist. And then when you reach menopause, your waist size starts increasing because your fat starts to uh, form around the belly area. 
and, uh, and you want your waist to be 35 for European women, but 31.5 for women of color. Otherwise, you're going to end up having a, a, being predisposed to diabetes. And so all these little things begin to happen. And, and, our, our, and from what you see most older women, especially at the age of menopause, you see most of them are overweight, especially women of color. Uh, whether they were athletes to begin with or anything, they're just overweight. And that's because they didn't keep up the same exercise level. And they continue to eat the same food that they ate when they were 17. Um, so that we have to change what we eat as we age um, and recognize who we are and change it with, as our exercise level. And I, I like to describe people as the um, starch is for athletes. And if you're not an athlete, that's their form of sugar that they need to, um, to swim for six hours, run your marathons, play tennis for six hours, and what's the grant? If you're not an athlete, you can't eat like an athlete. And we all eat like we're athletes. And as a result, we all become diabetic. Uh, the CDC also mentions, in addition to diet and uh, the lack of physical activity, uh, tobacco use and alcohol consumption. Oh, that's going also down. Also part of the American lifestyle? Well, yes, and it's going down. People are very conscious of it. Um, unfortunately, the, the industry came along with the e-cigarette, which still has nicotine in it, so now we all think that we can do that, including children, teenagers, so that there's always something that the industry comes up with when they're, when something is on the decline. So uh, that's what they've come up with, and, uh, and so nicotine still is, is one of the most damaging of our risk factors because that truly damages the artery wall. And, and nicotine especially damages all the arteries, including to the leg. So you won't see people having a lot of clogged arteries down in the leg unless they're a smoker or a diabetic. Otherwise, they're not going to have that because those arteries are so large. And so smoking is, is, is one of our deadliest of, uh, of the risk factors for heart disease. Uh, people think of lung cancer, but no, it is heart disease that, that it affects the most. It, it tears up our arteries and allows it to back to form. Um, but that is on the decline. Um, unfortunately, still young, young teenagers are still beginning to use it too much. But again, you know, this is a tremendous effort. And we now know the cigarette industry was lying to us. So, so we're kind of straight on that story. Alcohol keeps waxing and waning. Um, you know, and we know that that's a big problem, especially with drunk driving. So, so there's a lot of things that we have to work on. Um, alcohol is not as damaging to the heart, by the way, because that actually increases your good cholesterol. Level. The damage comes when you start to drive with it and you become um, drunk and you start you know, carrying out illegal activities. So, but the damage to alcohol is not as damaging to the heart, unless there's so much of it that you that you actually damage your heart muscle. But if it's a, if it's a small amount, it's actually good for the heart. All right, got to take a break. We'll be right back. And some some more strategies for empowerment. Give us some advice. How much time do we have? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. Reverend Hurley, uh, you've got a lot of sponsors working with you for your celebration of Wellness Day. And the first thing we have the NBC Forum for the Outreach Help. And the major funders close the gap. We have Wegmans, we have Maryland Physicians Care, Pro, um, Ernest Eats out of California, and the Health Farms in Vermont, and John Cruz, Whole Foods, um, the Fresh Market, Ready Tank, Ready, and Suburban Hospital, John Hopkins. All of them to help us as well as we're getting a lot of volunteers to come from United Faith Ministry and, and and to register, we need to register. What time is the fair? And um, tell us exactly where it takes place. It starts at um, 8 o'clock until 12.30. And then there's more school exams at 12.30. And you um, can at register on at New Beginning Center, 16512 Old Central Avenue in Blue, Maryland. That's where it is. And they can register online at www.com. Dash action.org. Okay. And we've been showing that on, uh, on, our, um, on our screen. Uh, Reverend Hall, the Bible yeah. says uh, train up a child with the way they should go. Yes. So, so tell our parents how to train up their kids. What we need to train up our kids is get them committed to a healthy lifestyle. Get them uh, used to moving more and eating less. And get them committed to understanding the power and the benefit of living a healthy life because if you live a healthy life, you live a longer life. You live a better life. Dr. Davidson, cardiovascular disease, it's preventable. Is it reversible? Yes, it is. But you have to eliminate your risk factors. Uh, we, have, we, we don't have actual numbers for reversing, but we have a trend towards reversal 
you didn't get your bag cholesterol under 7 under the studies that we've done. Under that 7 off. That's the bad cholesterol. <laughs> and everybody looks at the total. It's the bad cholesterol, bad because it's bad for you. Under 70, and there's a trend towards reversal. You have to get your sugar down, your blood pressure to go from 20 over 80, and get your sugar down under 100, get your body mass index down under 25, and you will have a chance to reverse your disease. All right, Dr. Patricia Davidson, Dr. Uh, uh, Gertie Hurley, and Dr. Michael Hall, thank you all for And thank you for being with us. That's Viewpoint on Pat Lawson. You stay with us now for News 4 today.